Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to uh, our webinar presentation sponsored by Search Wizards. Um, this is a presentation we're going to do based on how to kind of supercharge your sourcing. So basically how to like take some of the, you know, maybe the regular things that you already know about and how to take them and kind of add a, a little shot of adrenaline to them. So uh, we're going to talk a, a little bit about some of the stuff you know and maybe some of the stuff that you don't know or haven't used before. Um, a little bit about myself, for those of you who don't know who I am. My name is Mark Tortorisi, and uh, I have my own training company called Transform Talent Acquisition. And, uh, you know, really my focus is training sourcers, recruiters, um, people just like you. And I've done this for, you know, large corporations. I've done this for staffing agencies. I've done this for individuals. Um, but uh, a lot of it has been focused around sourcing, around technical understanding, around recruiting, candidate engagement. I've also done trainings for interview, uh, interview training, hiring manager training, and, uh, you know, similar, similar ones. So um, I've done this before for, you know, various companies. Um, you know, various companies like uh, Google, Apple, Facebook, um, a bunch of different ones. And so uh, what you're you know, kind of going to get is um, just kind of the latest and greatest of some of the stuff that I've done um, over the course of uh, the last you know, few months. So first things first, uh, when we talk about, you know, or when you have to think about your own sourcing strategies or your own sourcing programs that you have at your company, um, you have to make sure that everybody's on board. And if there are people who don't understand the need for the sourcing strategies, then that can become a problem. So some people, they do understand that need for sourcing strategies. And then, um, you know, others just plain don't get it. And sometimes the sourcing strategies are so bad that they kind of make you want to do this. So the least that you should be doing when you're sourcing, um, and a lot of you know companies I talk to, everyone is pretty much focused on just like one or two sourcing methods, but you should really be utilizing a lot of them. Um, so you should be sourcing multiple sites. You should be searching for contact info. You should be targeting companies, competitor companies. Um, you should be using social networking sites, code sharing sites, um, and also automating kind of the things you're doing with browser extensions. So to kind of figure out where you want to go with your sourcing strategy, at least start with the things that you know and then go from there. So searching LinkedIn from Google, um, searching Google Plus profiles. Google Plus is a great you know, set of names and it's a good database to use. Um, searching Facebook profiles, always a good one. Sourcing through Twitter and searching through code sharing sites. So code sharing sites can also be very good to use um, if you're looking for more like you know software engineering oriented folks. So no matter what size of your company is, whether you're an individual or you have a whole team, you have to have a plan. And so that's what we're going to do is figure out a plan. Uh, so the first one that I want to talk about are what I call LinkedIn searches and hacks. Um, really, we're not hacking anything, so don't you know feel like you're going to get in trouble with legal or something like that. This is really just stuff that's available for free, and it's publicly available to anybody who wants it. So one of the tricks that you can do um, is target a company, but run this search from Google as opposed to running it within LinkedIn. Now, when you're in LinkedIn and you want to target a company, it's easy. You just go to the company field and put in the name of the company. But if you want to do this in Google, then it's different. And so I have a string here that can actually help you with that. Um, also, if you don't have LinkedIn Recruiter, then this is a method to get more candidates who are not necessarily within your network. So I'm going to manipulate basically some of the existing information within the templates on LinkedIn and use it in my search. So here's an idea. Um, I need to find a manager with a financial risk background, and I also want them to be from KPMG. So if that's the case, um, start off with my basic 
LinkedIn string. And so this is like the basic formula that you use for like most of your LinkedIn searches that you're going to run in Google. And I'll explain in a second why we're doing this in Google versus LinkedIn. And there's actually a good reason for both of those. Um, but I'm using the site operator, which is a Google operator. And that basically just limits your search results just to one site. And um, I'm searching two different parts of LinkedIn. I'm searching the, a folder called in and another folder called pub. Um, and also I want to get rid of uh, directory pages, which are just a bunch of names um, um, on one page, but they're all unrelated names. So I want to minus those out. And so I do minus in URL and then colon dir. And the minus sign has to be right next to the in URL piece. And then in URL has to be right next to dir. Also, too, I wanted to point out that when you're searching the same site in Google, you don't put parentheses around it. Normally, when you're using an or set of statements, you want to put parentheses around one thing or another. But if you do that with the same site operator for the same site, then Google only searches the first one, but not the second one. And so um, it's just a bug with Google. So leave those parentheses off just for this one piece. Um, if it's different sites, then you can put parentheses around it. But if it's the same site, don't put parentheses around it. So next thing I do is I actually go to my titles. So with titles, yeah, I could put you know finance manager as a title, but I also want to try and get as many possibilities um, in my search. So I put things like manager of finance. I put finance manager, financial manager, finance management which is really not a title necessarily, but um, that's fine. And then I also put the word manager in writ at the end of the string along with risk. So I'll explain why we kind of did that as well. And then the last piece is the piece that's the most important. Basically, we're looking for people who are currently working at KPMG or have worked there before. So... When you run this search in Google, then there you go. You got all these results of people who are um, either working at KPMG or have worked there before, and they're all related to, um, they're all financial risk managers. And if you notice, the titles are all there, and they have slightly different titles too. So gets you a good search. Um, I think it, this got me like, I don't know, 10,000 people. So really, that's not a very practical search. So in the future, you know, we'll add other terms to bring the results down. So why did I just do what I just did there with that string? So why did I enter in so many titles when I could just put in finance manager? Um, why did I put the word manager in quotes all by its lonesome? If anyone knows that, the answer to that, then, you know, you win the prize. And why can I just use LinkedIn Recruiter? If you have LinkedIn Recruiter account, why can't I just use that? So let's address those. Um, why enter so many titles? You know, why do you have to do that? Well, the reason why is if I just search for finance manager in quotes, I'm going to get results like this. So this person, that's their title, finance manager. They work at KPMG. So that's fine. but if I enter variant titles like manager of finance, financial manager, um, manager of financial, which isn't really a title, but then if you look at this result, you can see clearly that this person is a manager, comma, financial risk management at KPMG. So even though we didn't put a comma in our search, this person is still going to come up because um, there are certain characters that most search engines will not count. They're called escape characters. Commas, exclamation points, um, dashes, hyphens, ampersands, all these characters aren't going to be read by the search engine. A slash is not going to be read by the search engine. Um, so all those characters are just basically treated as nothing. They're treated as spaces. So that means you want to put in things where you're trying to think what the results are going to look like. So in this case, manager, comma, finance, or manager, comma, financial, which is why I put those titles the way I did. 
So that means basically all these keywords here plus the word manager in quotes are going to get me all these titles. Manager of finance, manager, comma, finance, manager of financial risk, manager, comma, finance management, manager, comma, financial risk. So I'm trying to capture as many titles as possible while still making sure that they're right. So that's easy. Good to know. So why did I put the word manager in quotes? That's a good one. Um, really, the main reason is because Google does word stemming for all single terms. So it means if you should have one word by itself, Google is going to find all these variations of what they think you're talking about. That can be good um, in some cases, and then it can also be very, very bad. So here's an example. Um, if I don't add quotes around like the word manager, then I'm going to get stuff like manager, but it'll also find management, it'll find lead, led, managed, they'll find all these similar terms. And Google doesn't let us know what similar terms that they use. They don't, they don't let us know which words do word stemming. It's part of their secret, you know, secret sauce. So we just have to run a search and then look at what results come up and figure out what those terms are. But if you see more and more words that are in the wrong context, then maybe you do want to put quotes around the single word. Because when you put quotes around a single word, it forces Google to only search just that word. And so even though some of these terms could be okay for our search and get us managers, here's some examples as to the good and bad. So f manager, when used in the context of finance manager, that's a good, a good hit. Management, in terms of finance management, that's a maybe. Um, they could be a manager, but they could also just be talking about the finance management department or something like that. Um, and then, of course, management in, in, if, in the context of associate and financial management, that is obviously bad. They're not even a manager. And then the word manage by itself, as in manage a team, that's good. But manage when in the context of manage daily financial reports, that's bad. So there's kind of like ideas that you should think about when you just put in a word and how search engines do this word stemming technique. So use quotes if you want to force Google just to get the word. And if you put quotes around manager, then you'll always get the word manager in those profiles. And you'll get the exact word that you want. Ah, so why can I just use LinkedIn Recruiter? So that's another question that you guys were probably thinking. Right? I have a LinkedIn Recruiter account. Why do I even have to go to Google? Well, because different search engines index and rank pages differently. Google's relevancy rankings are a little bit different um, from LinkedIn's. So in other words, the way that Google ranks pages and the, the way that Google places importance on keywords within the, the pages are going to be different from the way that LinkedIn does it for their profiles, which essentially means you're going to get different numbers of results and you're going to get results in different orders. And that could be important when you're in the middle of like a heavy sourcing project. So basically what I'm trying to say is Google does not equal LinkedIn. So there's my LinkedIn internal search string. Um, I would just go to linkedin.com. In the keyword section, I enter all those keywords in the, in the company profile. I enter in KPMG, and I get all of those results, 11,198. Okay, good to know. Now, go to Google and enter in that string that I showed you before with the site operator and all the different titles, and run that in Google. Well, that number is different, but more importantly, the people that get brought up first are different. So different people, different numbers of results, and different orders of results. 
Good to know. So besides number differences, which we saw in those two result pages, the keyword relevancy rankings are different. So it's always good to use both because of the way that Google places importance on certain keywords is going to be different from the way that LinkedIn places importance on certain keywords. Okay, so here's a question for everyone. What's your, uh, what's your response rate for your LinkedIn in-mails? <laughs> it's something I think you can easily figure out if, if you have your account. You can just go over to the, I think it's in your account settings, and then it gives you an average number of response, um, your, your response percentage. So according to LinkedIn, after they did their whole campaign to get everybody's response rates higher, the national average is set, I think, for 25%. So 25% means responding. That doesn't mean like there was responding with a yes or a no. That was just responding with either a yes or a no, go away and leave me alone. But that just means 25% response rate. So that means 75% of the time, it's just not happening. So we don't just want to rely on LinkedIn in-mails. Instead, we want to try and figure out ways to connect with candidates on a more personal level. And so when it comes to that, this really means like trying to get to the candidate's personal web pages. Could be getting to blogs that they've written. It could be projects that they're working on. It could be a website with their portfolio on it. But the reason why I want to go to these pages instead of just their LinkedIn page is because I can find emails and contact information on these pages. And if I have a person's email versus an in-mail, then I'm always going to email the person. I won't send them an in-mail. So here is a kind of formula on how to use this for personal websites. And this is a trick that only works in Google. As far as I know, you can't do this um, with LinkedIn Recruiter. But uh, you start off with that same base string for LinkedIn that we talked about. So the site operator with linkedin.com slash in and linkedin.com slash pub. Um, and I'll, I don't know if I mentioned before, but the site operator is, you know, a Google specific um, search uh, and other search engines use it too. But what it does is it just limits your pages just to whatever the, the domain is that you put there. So after you enter that, you enter in some keywords, whatever they are. They could be titles. They could be, you know, anything really, maybe companies. Then you put in this part, and this part in green is the key piece. You put in the phrase, my projects, or personal website, or websites equals star equals blog. <laughs> and so that equals star equals is a Google only operator, and it's their fill in the blank operator. What it does is it connects two words next to each other a certain distance. I forget what it is. I think it's like 10 or I forget what it is. But it connects them together so they're near, but we don't know how many words are separating them. And there's a reason why we do this, um, and I'll show you in a second here. But that's the, the string that we start off with. Um, either my projects or personal website or websites equals star equals blog. So how do we use this? Well, let's say you need to find yourself iOS developers and you want to get to their personal websites. Okay, that's pretty easy. Start off with that basic string. Enter in some languages like Objective-C. Enter in the environment, iOS or iPhone or iPad. Um, enter in some software tools like the Coco API for the operating system, or maybe Xcode, which is a integrated development environment for working on Apple uh, applications. And then you add that piece again, 
the my projects or personal website or websites equals star equals blog. Now we have the keywords that are going to lead us to individual pages of um, iOS developers on LinkedIn, but more importantly, they're going to have links to their own website or the projects they're working on or a blog that they have. And again, we're just hoping to get to personal information um, for these sites. So that's what the results look like. And so you can see why I put that websites equals star equals blog because it's going to find those two words next to each other, but I'm not sure how far apart they are on the page. You can also see in the results it's building out personal website. So it's got a lot of different, uh, a lot of different stuff that I can use. And in terms of what the pages look like, well, they're going to look like that. So you can see why I put websites equals star equals blog or why I put personal websites because I'm actually going to get to um, the individual pages. And I can track down their email a lot quicker than um, if I was just sending them an in-mail. I mean, we have to realize that, you know, a lot of engineers or even just regular candidates, some of them don't even bother checking their LinkedIn account for like months and months. And if you're like hinging and waiting on the fact that a candidate is going to get back to you via your in-mail, then you might be waiting a long time. So instead, try and come up with ways to get to their personal information. Instead, um, it can, uh, yeah, it can definitely give you some some good results. Good. So any questions about that? I know that was kind of I know that was kind of crazy. <laughs> so here's the same thing. Um, but in this case, I can actually use the word portfolio. Now, I'm not going to just enter the word portfolio by itself. Um, and the reason why is because it's kind of like a, a general word that can appear anywhere in, somebody, in somebody's profile. So instead, I use the word profile next to the word websites. So I use websites equals star equals portfolio. And I think, okay, what type of person would have a portfolio online? So you can think, okay, visual designers, graphic designers, um, somebody who deals with, you know, UIs or graphics, they have artistic background, they have a graphics degree, they're using Photoshop, Illustrator, so all these things that they may have. And so you can even use that to come up with results and get people who have portfolios online. So totally works. Um, you get tons of results, and you have all these extra ways to contact these people now because of that personal websites technique. So definitely want to use it. Um, come up with a lot of stuff. There's an example of what it looks like. You can see their websites and then the portfolio. Then I can click on that and then just get to the person's portfolio. I'm sure they have ways to contact them on that site and you're good to go. So, pretty cool. Or at least I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so, yes. Now let's take things to, as, as we say here, ninja-like levels. I really don't like using that word anymore. I used to like using it, now I don't. Um, so, groups on LinkedIn are great because it's a targeted, um, audience for a particular topic. Uh, sometimes it's bad though. And the reason why it's sometimes bad is because um, the uh, sometimes people don't let you join the groups. Believe it or not, sometimes they don't like recruiters. <laughs> and uh, sometimes they um, you, you can only join 50 groups. I think with a, a LinkedIn recruiter account, you can only join 50, regroup, 50 groups. So that means you have to unjoin some or, you know, do something else. So instead of worrying about that, I'm going to say let's forget about joining the group and just use Google to search LinkedIn and then target people who belong to the group with a search string. So here's the formula. You start off again with that same search string that we started off the other LinkedIn searches with. 
I usually put in some keywords. And in, the, in this case, when we do the group searches, I usually just put in um, titles. And the reason why I put in titles is because I want to separate the group members from the, the recruiters who belong to the groups. Like, I don't need to connect with recruiters. I mean, recruiters are easy to find. So I just want to actually connect with the engineers or, you know, specialists who belong to these groups. So normally for the keywords, I really just limit it to titles. And then you just put the full name of the LinkedIn group in quotes. And that's the key piece. It's got to be the full name of the LinkedIn group. So, yes, yeah, so what does this mean? How do we how do we use this? So first thing you got to do is figure out which group you want to you want to target. And to do this, you can't use LinkedIn Recruiter. Um, if I remember correctly, you have to use the free version of LinkedIn. But when you go to the free version of LinkedIn, you can then select a little drop down menu at the top and change it to groups, which I did. And then you can start typing in some keywords that will might exist on um, one of the LinkedIn groups. So in this case, I typed in something related to computer vision and instantly I get all these different groups. So the great thing about these groups is you want to choose the ones that have like a, a large amount of, you know, users. So anything really in the high hundreds or thousands or ten thousands or whatever, that's what you want to go for. Um, also, too, you want to make sure that the, when you choose the group, that you choose a group name that's not a very common name. Like you can see the third one there, the group name is computer vision. So that's really just the words. Um, that's not a, an actual group. I can just search computer vision and I may get the group or I may get people who are mentioning it. But if you want to target a specific group, targeting something like, you know, computer vision online, that's a pretty specific name. So that's got more of a unique identifier. I know that people who belong to that group will be the right ones. So you can take that name and copy it and put it in quotes. So you can see my string there, I have it in quotes, computer vision online. I have software engineer or programmer or developer. They also sometimes call them researchers or scientists, but uh, all those guys in parentheses and every person that comes up is somehow associated with the group. Pretty awesome. So this is just another way to organize the amount of information that's on there. And you get to profiles like this when you run those searches. So somewhere on this page, this uh, at the bottom of the page where the uh, groups are, this person mentions the fact that he belongs to um, computer vision online. So pretty cool. Okay, so let's switch gears here. I think I've talked enough about LinkedIn until the cows come home here. Um, let's talk about Google Plus because Google Plus people discount it for I don't I don't know why, but they just discount it because they think people don't use it or whatever. But uh, everybody you know creates a Gmail account, you can pretty much create your own Google Plus account. So if the the potential for the number of names that are on Google Plus is actually very high, even if they don't maintain that that group, the information is still there. And so if I have a database that nobody is really accessing as much, I'm going to definitely figure out ways to get that information out of there. So Google Plus is good to source from. Um, you won't approach it, though. You can't approach it the same way you would approach LinkedIn because there's not a lot of information on the profiles. Um, we're talking basic job titles, maybe companies, maybe a degree. And that's about it. Still, that's enough information that I can come up with searches that work for me. The location information is user entered, which means it's not official. It also means it could be anything. Um, I've seen everything from like cities to states to, you know, slang terms like the Bay Area or Silicon Valley. I've seen like, you know, United States. I've seen the world. I've seen Middle Earth, 
I've seen like a, a zillion different things. Um, even some people put their iPhone GPS coordinates, which is funny, but not useful. So you just got to take it with a grain of salt. I would run searches with the location information, but then I would also run them without. So here's my first example. Let's say I want to find a UX designer, a user experience designer in the Bay Area. First thing you do is you start off with a base string for Google Plus. And this base string, the reason why it's worded the way it is, is because I want to focus just on the website plus.google.com. And I'm going to run this in Google's regular search, which means we're basically running a, a Google Plus search in Google's regular search engine. So I just want the site plus.google.com. And the reason why I have the phrase have her or have him in quotes is because um, I want to just get uh, individual profiles. And individual profiles, they say things like, you know, 325 people have him in their circles or, you know, 960 people have her in their circles. So they just tell you that and let you know, but it's on every single profile. So that's what I want to use. I want to use those words on every single profile search. So that's your base string. So then I add some UX concepts and titles. Um, so I put in like UE, UX, user experience, usability, interaction design, information architect. Uh, and I also put design, designer, engineer. So I put all these different variations. And then the last piece, I put in location. And so for location, like I said, you want to put in like cities, states, um, or region names for the location. And so you can put everything you want in there, but eventually it'll run out of words or space. So I just put the, the major cities and states to get you, you know, the basics of what you need. But even with just that simple of a search, I get all these people. And you can clearly see where they work. You can see where they're living. Um, of course, just because they you know, mention the word San Francisco on their profile, sometimes you do get ones where they're wrong. Like maybe they went to San Francisco State University, but they live in Seattle or something like that. But for the most part, it's, um, you know, it's, going to be, it's going to be right. So that's what the results look like. And this is the amount of information that, that is on these pages. So you have the name, you have the company, I have a location of where they're at, and I have a title. With that information, I can find this person um, with no problem. So we don't need that much information. Um, and with some simple sourcing skills, you could track this person down easily. Or you could just add them to your circles and then just email them through Gmail. So that's why I like, uh, yeah, Google+. Plus. Okay, so going to a different um, social network, Facebook. Facebook, people don't use. I don't know why, <laughs> but um, you can use it for a lot of different things. You have to enter in the search strings, though, not like search strings. You have to enter them in like plain, natural language. And depending on however you enter it, you may get different results. And so you kind of have to play around with it to see what it is that Facebook wants you to use to search. But you don't want to discount Facebook because they have a database of whatever it is. Was it 1.2 billion people? I mean, if, if you're saying goodbye to a database of 1.2 billion people, then, you know, you may be in trouble. So we want to use that information, definitely. Um, and the way that you do that is you focus on people who either study something or work somewhere or live somewhere or um, like something. And those are really the main things that you want to look for. So I can put people who study nursing and who work at Kaiser. And there you go. Shows you all the people there. You can see their names. You can see their titles. Um, sometimes where they live and where they studied. So all that information, again, even though it's like bare bones, it's just enough that I can cross-reference this with some other you know, tools that I have. 
here's another one. Engineers who work at Samsung Mobile USA. Again, more people than I might have had with, let's say, a LinkedIn search. Um, one thing about the titles is some people don't put their titles, but they put where they work, and then other people put where they work, but not their titles. So it's um, you have to play around with the search and do different versions of it just because you don't know, you know, how they, you know, like to write down what they do. Uh, here's another one. I did women who work uh, or women who live near New York and who work at McCann. So you can get specific with location. You can get specific with where they work. I can put men or women. So all those things um, you can use. I mean, you can even use this in terms of like a you know diversity type search if you want. So a lot of cool things that can be done with this this search. Uh, people who like stuff, right? People who like the Military Officers Association of America do something like that. So it's like you have all these different ways. It's good to use like things like organizations, companies. It's good to use things like, um, you know, just things that people center around. And you get tons of results, tons of results. Okay, so um, you can also use Twitter. And with Twitter, um, we're dealing with, again, a small amount of information per page. But it is, you know, more than enough that you can do something with. Twitter, you can actually search it via three different ways. And so um, one of the ways is just going to twitter.com and then just putting in some keywords. So that works kind of well for tweets or the postings that people do. But it doesn't work so well for, like, bios. For searching from Google, I can use the site operator, and then I can search for a Twitter bio. So that works pretty well. Or I can use a third-party search tool like Follower Wonk, which will also search Twitter bios. So let me just show you really quick a couple of these kind of cool things here. So I can go to Twitter, and when you search on Twitter, you're not going to put in like your typical search strings that we've been doing. In fact, you probably won't even put in job titles unless you're trying to search for bios. Instead, you want to put in uh, action words, verbs, really, and you want to put in nouns. Because most people who post on there, they post what they're doing at the time and, you know, what it is. So they're say, they'll post, yeah, I went to the movies, I'm at a restaurant, I'm doing this. It's going to be very small amounts of information. And so if you're trying to capture people who actually are doing the work that you, you want to hire them for, put in like action words, like I was coding this application, or I coded this program last night, or something like that. And then the thing that they're actually developing, a piece of software, a program, an application, or an app. Um, there's tons of job postings on Twitter, so you got to get you got to do minus job and minus jobs, um, but that's pretty easy. And the minus sign has to be right next to the word, otherwise it won't work. But still, you can see clearly it's pulling up some you know cool results. So that's one way. Another way is to use hashtags. And hashtags are very um, useful, especially for like maybe conferences. All you need to do is figure out the hashtag that they're using for that particular con conference, like the um, the AWS reInvent conference, right? I don't know what the hashtag is, so I just do a search for it, and I realize it's just hashtag reInvent. And so I'm like, okay, that's great. I want to find the people who are going to this. So how do I find the people who are going to this conference? Well. You can do that. I can put hashtag reinvent, which is the conference, and then put phrases like going to, attending, speaking, panel, speaker, presenting, presentation, or keynote. Basically, all the keywords that anybody who is actually going to the conference, they will have those in their post. They'll say, yeah, this was a great presentation, or yeah, I'm going to this conference, or I'm attending, or I'm one of the speakers, or I'm a panelist. They're going to use all of those words. So really, it's just a matter of just playing around with the words you think they're going to use. 
but this one definitely works. So next time there's a conference that you want to like, you know, kind of source from, use Twitter because everyone, you know, posts what they're doing where they are at the conference, and it's a, uh, yeah, very cool. Or at least I think it's cool. <laughs> so there's your formula for searching Twitter profiles on Google. So this is if you actually want to find individual bios. So short biographies about the people. Use the site operator, twitter.com, and you enter in keywords and possibly a company. Um, some people don't put companies all the time, but you can search companies if you want. And then you definitely want to get rid of job postings, and you definitely want to get rid of the phrase, we are. And the reason why I do that is because I don't want to see like company Twitter profiles and I don't want to see like third party, like technical consulting agencies. I don't want to say any of that. And if I don't want to see the individual tweets from the people, I can do minus in URL status and that will remove them. So that's your basic string right there. And so what this does is you can use it for something as simple as a Ruby software developer. I start off with that site, twitter.com. I enter in. Ruby, I enter in some job titles. I can even enter in some locations. So I put cities, states, and then I minus out the keywords. That's as far as you want to go for Twitter bio searches. You don't you just want to you want to limit it to just titles and location or maybe companies. But that's you don't want to get any crazier than that because the information just won't be there. But when I run that search, check out the awesomeness of all these people who are developers and Ruby developers, and they're all in the Bay Area. It's like it's like a party. So all these different ways that you can get these people, it's pretty awesome. So here's one particular profile. Again, even though it's a small amount of information, um, I can find this person, right? I know where they're at. I see their company. I see a website that they have. They have a location. All the information that I need to track that person down. So pretty cool. Okay, so the I think we're I think we're getting close to time here. I want to leave like a little bit of room for questions, but. Um, the uh, the actual um, ways to use this information, I want to go over quickly before we stop here. So in terms of browser extensions, there are a couple that you should use, and these are all Chrome extensions. And uh, I, I definitely suggest using them. Connect 6 is one of them. Profit is another. The FB UID scraper, which is what you use to scrape Facebook profiles, is a third. And also the search bar. So the search bar is awesome too. But the Connect 6 is a people search extension, and it's free once you sign up for it. Profit, another free one. Um, they both function similar to like Connectifier or like, you know, um, Dice Open Web or Talent Bin, but they're free. So that's why we like them. FB UID Scraper for scraping Facebook information and exporting it into a spreadsheet. And then the search bar, which you can create shortcuts to search any highlighted word on a web page. And so really quick how they work, um, there are free ones and there are paid for ones for social aggregation searches. But I like something like Connect6 where you can just mouse over somebody's profile. And then if they have, you know, a profile on other pages and also an email on those pages, they'll just aggregate it and put it in one place for you. Pretty easy, right? Makes it very easy actually. So Connect6, we definitely like. Um, and again, it's a free account, so just sign up with it. Um, the search bar is another good one. The search bar, you can actually select text and then search it with a single shortcut. So you could search Google, LinkedIn, Facebook, Google+, Wikipedia, or you can just create your own search if you'd like. And you can create hotkeys for each one. So here's an example. Let's say I'm doing a, a sourcing 
exercise here and I come across the term RTOS and I'm like, wow, what does RTOS mean? I have no idea. So I highlight it and with the old Alt G shortcut, it's going to use that search bar setting and it's going to search that automatically in Google and give me the definition. So it's not mind blowing, but it is time saving. Another way that it works is let's say I'm doing a search in Facebook and I highlight a person's name. I can use my shortcut for searching LinkedIn, which in this case is Alt L, and it'll automatically take the person's name and search it in LinkedIn. And then, of course, I can just go to the individual profile and I can use something like profit and that will give me the email address. So there's three extensions kind of in one profit um, and the search bar in uh, and connect six. So that's kind of cool as well. And then the Facebook scraper is one that you should play around with. That one allows you to download data and then um, export it. So let's say I run a search in Facebook, like I like the one I showed you, but in this case, I change it to engineers who live in Sydney, Australia, and who work at Google. So I, can, I run that search, and I get all these people. So I use this add-on, and that add-on is going to download the results into an Excel sheet. And those results can be opened in either Excel, which is okay, but more importantly, you can put it in Google Docs. And you usually want to do Google Docs because once it's a web page, you can deal with the information. So there's the Excel sheet, which is fine. But if I take it and save it into Google Docs, now I have a web page. And now I can actually highlight each person's name and use the search bar and then cross reference with, you guessed it. LinkedIn and go to their individual profile, use profit and get their contact information. So it's all it's all connected really. <laughs> okay, and then here's the last one. You can use an email permutator and connect 6 Chrome extension to find people's contact information. An email permutator is just a page that does all the combinations of first names and last names um, and and just puts them out for you. So on the left there, and I'll send you, I'll send you guys this link um, for you, but uh, on the left, you put in the first name, the last name, and then just the domain of where the person works. And then all the parts in green get automatically generated. And so with connect, since I'm in a web page, I can just mouse over each of those names. And most of the time it'll just say no result for this search. But once I mouse over the right one, then connect six pops up and it's like oh yeah this person is in our database and so this isn't like totally foolproof but it does make it easy for you if you just have a list of variant variations of the person's name and you're just looking for which one is the one that works so that's why i like using these extensions it can be uh do some very cool stuff with them okay wow, that was a lot i feel like i talked a lot okay so Summary, um, don't use just one source of information. LinkedIn is great, but there's more out there. Source from any website or database, but don't limit yourself. And of course, use add-ons and browser extensions. And that is pretty much it. I think we have time for questions now. And thanks to uh, Search Wizards for putting this on. Okay, so I think I have a question here. Um, yes, that is true. Yeah, so uh, um, one of the attendees said that after you run a search inside of Twitter.com, you can actually click on the accounts tab to bring back only profiles of the keywords of the, the person's bio. So you, could, um, you can do the bio searches in Twitter. I would recommend doing both because like we said, the way that Twitter indexes their profiles will be different from the way that Google indexes their profiles, but that is a good point. Good. So other other kind of questions. I mean, I know I covered a lot here, but um, any other questions from uh, the audience?
No questions. Wow. A very good crowd. Oh, okay. Wait, no, we do have questions. Sorry, my bad. Oh, yeah. So the question is, can you just do websites star blog versus websites uh, versus websites equals star equals blog? I think I tried it once before, and it I somehow came back to using the equals. I'm gonna, but we can we can try it again. Because yeah, I, that's what I thought too, but it didn't. I think I got different results. So here, I'll show you what the question is. The question is this. <clears throat> So the question is, with the end of the string here, it's websites equals star equals blog, but do you have to do that, or can you actually put just websites star blog? So I think, I mean, the I when I run those differently, I typically have different results, but let's just, let's just test it really quick. I'm going to test it with a very easy, easy search here. Whoops, if I can type. Okay, so, and in fact, I'll even just do this to make sure that we just get the blogs. So 47 and 10, and that number, by the way, is not really the, the real number. That number is just an approximate number. But 47, 10, and then we'll just do without the equals. So that. Yeah, it's, let me take out the spaces here. So maybe, maybe with no space. So I think that star, it's like the one word that it's filling in. So I think if you do like two stars, it tries to fill in like two words. And we can also try it, see if we can try it with quotes like that. No, not with quotes. Quotes doesn't work with that star. So the, the star will connect these two as if they're quotes. So I think the you can either do websites equals star equals blog, or you can just do website space star blog. And that works. I guess we can put it with the other stuff too. Um, personal website or yeah like that better yeah and when you do a space I think it gives you different results yeah with a space it doesn't yeah yeah with the space it doesn't work so you got to do no in this case you got to do no space so see that works Cool. Any other questions? So covered a lot of stuff. I didn't get to do uh, one tiny section, but yeah, you know, I, I gave you guys the bulk of it. So you have all the uh, you know kind of cool ideas that you have to uh, go home with here. So we'll try and get this um, recording up for everybody, um, you know, as soon as we can. And uh, thank you to everyone for attending. And we'll see you guys next time.